So my name is Stefan van den Bergen, Ghent University. Um, and maybe in follow-up of what um, the introduction was, we have quite a history in image reconstruction, Monte Carlo simulation, but also in system developments, uh, leading to some spin-off companies, uh, first of all, the Molecubes, and more recently also um, Xeos, which is more for intraoperative imaging as well, but using very similar technology, which you see here, and also uh, more software-related uh, artificial intelligence networks um, to do low-dose PET imaging. So this is a combination of people working in the university, but also in uh, companies closely connected to the university. Um, maybe just for those who don't know, PET, um, PET is a bit more difficult than CT and MRI, um, and especially for the logistics behind it. So you need typically a cyclotron, uh, either on site or close by, to produce your uh, short living radioisotope. And then you need a radio pharmacy to couple this radioisotope to your radio pharmaceutical before you inject it in your patient. So this is quite uh, personal intensive. Uh, and then also you have typically nowadays spec CT cameras or if you would to spec, uh, spec CT cameras. Uh, and then we have image reconstruction and image analysis, of course, like in other modalities. A bit of physics, um, the basis of PET is basically positron emission. So we use um, isotopes like F18, which have a too high number of protons and they will decay to a more stable state. But it's in this case to oxygen 18. So the proton becomes a neutron. And in this process, you also have the emission of a positron, which annihilates at a relatively short distance. So here it's two millimeter, but typically it's more like half a millimeter, one millimeter into two uh, opposed 511 kV photons. And this is what we then measure with coincidence electronics and scintillators and all these kind of detectors. Now, during the last 10, 20 years, we've seen quite some uh, major improvements in PET performance, being better spatial resolution. So we have gone to smaller pixels. We also have switched from uh, photomultiplier tubes to silicon PMs. Uh, which are more uh, digital detectors. And uh, then we have uh, also improvements in the axial coverage of the scanner. After first removing the collimator, scanners have become longer. And nowadays we're typically around, for a standard PET scanner, around uh, 20 to 30 centimeter. And additionally to this, there's also been major improvements in time of flight PET measurements. So the first PET systems did not measure time of flight. But around 2005, 2006, the first clinical time of flight PET system came on the market, which had about 500 to 600 picoseconds. And this has now improved towards two to 300 picoseconds. And I think even more recently, towards 175. So PET is relatively easy to improve. You can improve the sensitivity, making it longer. You can improve the spatial resolution detectors. And also at the same time, you improve the axial field of view. So none of these will affect the others. The only thing you need to do is make sure that your electronics is also fast enough to be able to handle all these data. Um, so if you look back so a bit, we, we are now talking about total body PET in this talk, uh, and you could ask, why has this not happened before? Well, basically, there was always something else that could be first improved. If you see this, uh, you see the removal of collimators. PET was... Uh, kind of joined with CT. So that was around 2000, 2005. And then also time of flight came. And actually right now we see since a couple of years also the introduction of total body PET. Um, and the other reason is as well that total body PET is a very expensive technique. It requires a lot of detectors. Um, so you have also some computational and hardware limitations to handle all these data. Uh, and Basically, it took a couple of years before there was really funding uh, in the US to develop the first total body PET scanners. So if you now compare what we have available, and I took here the, the Siemens systems, which have actually the same technology in the standard PET scanner. So this is what we call the vision, basically a CT in a PET of about uh, 23 centimeters axial length. Um, in this way, this system, you would have to stitch your patient through it. And typically we do this now in a continuous mode. Um, and then you form the uh, patient's body. And this is typically what we will see in a PET scanner is the torso of the patient with or without the brain included. Um, now the total body PET scan is basically the one that Siemens has actually four PET scanners after each other. So you 
increase the axial length, but also every ring combines with every other ring that you have here or every sub pet scanner, which really dramatically boosts sensitivity. So going to 10 to 20 times faster torso imaging. And this can then be used for lower dose or also for simultaneous imaging of organs. This is very interesting. I think in general, nuclear medicine physicians are really uh, stimulated by this, but the main problem, of course, is the cost of this. So it's like, instead of buying a Toyota Corolla sedan, you would have to buy a Lamborghini Huracan. So about a factor of uh, three, four, five difference. Nevertheless, there are quite some systems now in the market. Um, first system that came in the market was from United Imaging, so a Chinese company, and that's coming from the NIH project with UC Davis, which has a, a very long axial field of view, actually as long as most patients will be, or longer even, so 191 centimeter axial length, but it's also quite expensive, so uh, 10 to 12 million euro. Um, then there's also a system at the University of Pennsylvania, which, which we collaborate quite uh, intensively. Um, they have their own system based on Philips technology, but this system has not been commercialized. And then probably a system you will find most in Europe is the Siemens Quadra. So this has a 106 centimeter long axial field of view. And more recently, also GES uh, brought the kind of platform for a total body PET scanner on the market. So first of all, it's right now it's 32 centimeters, but it will be extendable to 64 or 128 centimeters. And the interesting thing is that this is probably uh, the bit the cheaper version because it actually also uses not LYSO, which is quite expensive with PGO. Now, if you look at images from uh, these systems, and here again, I took the data from the Siemens scanner. So the Vision 600 is actually the standard axial field of view, the standard PET scanner, which has already time of flight of around 200 picoseconds. Uh, it gives you very nice images after 12 minutes, which you see here. Uh, but if you now compare the same patient actually in a total body PET scanner on the same technology, the, which is called the Quadra, um, you see that you have actually a much higher sensitivity. Um, and it's a bit technical, but there are like two different modes. In the standard modes, it's 83 kilocounts per second per megabactyl. So it's about a factor four to six higher than what you have available in the short axial field of view scanner, the standard PET. So you can see you can bring down the acquisition time and you see that you get still nice quality. So you don't have to scan for 12 minutes, but you would get a nice image in two to three minutes already. And even one minute is quite good and 30 seconds may still be clinically diagnosable. And also 15 seconds is still an impressive image for what you have. Uh, this is actually a PSMA scan, which is one of the newer tracers in uh, PET imaging. So basically total body PET, what it shows is that it has potential for very fast imaging, um, but there's also some challenge to really uh, make this system uh, combined with fast and high patient throughput, which is not so easy. And that's something we have some uh, research on. So if you look a bit at the, the, the benefits and the negative sides of total body PET, well, definitely very sensitive. You can do very fast scan times, let's say one, two minutes. You get it in one bed position. That's also very practical. And you can also use it to reduce the dose of PET. But you have it as kind of like an expensive technology. So it comes at a cost which is about four to five times higher than what you standardly would pay for a PET scanner. Um, and the patient position is still the same. So that takes up quite a portion of the time. Uh, on the other hand, the, the CT dose has not really been optimized, although there is already some work on this. Uh, and you get a lot of data also in one acquisition because the sensitivity is so high. So you have to do a storage problem, transfer problem, and also a bit of a reconstruction problem. So total body PET is a bit on the, uh, I would say the early raised, early rise of this curves, which is a typically the hype cycle and technology adoption, adoption cycle. Um, so the question is, will it come to the expected uh, expectations or would you think it will actually kind of become more a niche uh, market? So now if you um, are into molecular imaging or nuclear imaging and maybe more general in radiology, um, the challenge is not always anymore on what is possible, but actually also about the cost of everything about the whole workflow and also about the amount of data. So basically, if you talk to nuclear medicine physicians and also radiologists, 
They want more accurate systems, so they probably want more spatial resolution, but also cost reduction of the systems. And uh, a big problem, at least in our country, but I think it's in many different places, is also availability of personnel, because to operate such a scanner, you need two, three persons typically. And also there's a high demand of patients, uh, for scans for patients, but also there's also a high amount of data coming out of the scanner, which has to be reviewed. So also on the physician side, there's a shortage of personnel and they're quite often overloaded also with work. So we have to think about a good solution for this. What we propose as a solution is actually uh, some more simple system, uh, which has become possible because of the newer technology that's now available with PET detectors and which we also developed for our other systems is basically a system that would just enable you to stand in a scanner and operate a bit like what you see at the airports, the flat panel, uh, high throughput screening of uh, passengers. So probably not as fast as this one, but we think about uh, something like 30 seconds for a scan. So basically the idea is to walk and stand in the scanner instead of putting the patient on the bed and sliding in the scanner, scanning and then coming out. So this would uh, become possible because we also have much higher sensitivity. We started designing this about a year and a half ago. Um, and we see here what we actually based ourselves on. It was actually existing PET CT scans and also general anatomy books where we have actually uh, quite good measures of the typical depth, uh, abdominal depth, the shoulder breadth of patients and the sitting height. So we took the 99% percentile and double check this also with PET CT uh, scans to see if they fit on what we have seen in patients. Because of course, patients can be quite, can be a bit different than in the reality. And this brought us to the design of about 70 centimeter wide detector, uh, 50 centimeter gap. And as in uh, the quadra is also oriented to imaging the torso. This is what we mostly do in uh, nuclear medicine. The legs are rarely scanned, maybe only for melanoma, but we focus really on the torso of the patient. And this is then more technical and I can skip that one. So instead of scanning your patient in a cylindrical scanner with a patient laying on a bed and sliding into the scanner, like you see in the blue one here, um, we actually do plan to do this with a vertical flat panel total body bed. So there's a couple of advantages to it, basically, um, you can actually bring the detectors much closer than here. So you don't need a full cylinder. So you save a lot on the detector material. So you make about a factor two, three uh, lower cost just by changing the geometry. So basically you bring it closer, which increases the solid angle. And this leads to higher sensitivity for less detectors. So lower cost, which also reduces one of the problems we often have in PET is the cooling of the detectors. And I think also major advantage is the smaller footprint in your department. So basically, if you look at the size of a regular PET CT scanner, it easily takes about four or five meters in your uh, room uh, on one side and then also a couple of meters on the other side. So while this is more uh, three by two meters, so much more compact. Um, the reason we can do this right now um, is that we have already developed since about uh, eight years ago also monolithic detectors, which are a bit different than what we use now in PET. So we actually use, uh, just like SPECT, a monolithic uh, scintillator block. Uh, and then we put a silicon PM array on. So we're not, not going to pixelate this. And this enables us to also measure the depth of interaction and get better spatial resolution uh, with this detector. And here you see some work being done already a couple of years ago with uh, this detector, you see you can get very good depth of interaction, so the different layers, and also um, very good spatial resolution in every layer. So this is now uh, being upgraded to what we call from a preclinical detector towards a clinical detector, so which also requires the introduction of time of flight, which you don't need in small animal imaging. We've taken the, these performances already before building the system and also um, designed a monolithic block. We designed a full system in Monte Carlo simulations. Um, in this case, we used BGO, but we've later on also changed this to LYSO. Um, and we, our aim was to do 30 second stationary acquisition with standard dose, which we do now, which is 
actually already relatively low in Europe. It's about three megabecquerel per kilogram. So here you see the patient that we simulated. And you see you can get very nice detail uh, in 30 seconds. There's some limited angle artifacts, which have to do with the fact that you don't have a full system coverage around your patient. Uh, but we were already able to remove those with some deep learning. So we've compared the system now with a conventional total body PET scanner, and we see also that we can benefit from the higher spatial resolution, what you see here. So we have here, again, the 30 second acquisition on both systems. Uh, and you see that the small lesions, especially in the lung here and the liver, can be better visualized. And also, especially the ribs, you can see better delineation and also in the brain and in the spine as well. Now, going back to the cost a bit, um, so basically we compared it to the most sold commercial uh, total body PET scanner, which is the Siemens Quadra in uh, Europe, more than 10 installations already. And um, we actually looked at the cost of this with BGO or with LYSO, where LYSO has some advantages with time of flight. And we see that we can get about a, a cost reduction of about a factor two and a half, three just for the same performance and even better spatial resolution and comparable sensitivity. So this is because we can reduce the number of, the amount of scintillators, but also the amount of uh, silicon PM. So you, the component cost of these systems will be around 1 million euro. So that is quite, uh, quite good, which is actually quite comparable to a regular PET CT camera. So a short axial field of view one. Quite early in this project, we also have done some mock-up tests. So without building the system, but um, testing it, if how patients like it, because of course, if a system may be very good, but if the patient don't like the, the principle, uh, this is also something we should check before. To do this, we have made a mock-up, uh, very simple with wood and wood panels, and also with, um, with the, um, here the kind of fake detectors in there, but with handlebars and also things and checked how patients experience it, how difficult it is. And yes. so we see that we can actually get um, quite good, patients can do it, that's it for sure. They get an instruction sheet before what they should do. Um, and in this case, we can also check how much patients move during these scans. That was actually the idea of the setup. So this is done with motion tracking camera from uh, Microsoft, and then also with markers on the cutting color, which you can see actually when you look back here. So you see these black things over here, over the Glass shoulders finish. have also white markers on it. So it also shows you how long the scan only would take. So it's very quick, 30 seconds. So you can go then to the uh, next patient already. So, and here you see some, results already from this, so quite preliminary results, but they show you that basically you have different ways uh, to do the exam. And the most efficient way was actually to let the patient lean back against the surface and then hold the handlebars. And this way we seem to get below one millimeter of movement, which is quite good for, for PET imaging. So this is possible because we also scan very fast, of course. So the longer you scan, the more movement we have. And in this case, we only scan 30 seconds. And otherwise, if we would just stand straight, we actually will uh, have some forward and backward movement of the head. So this reduce when we go lean backwards, both for the shoulder, the chest, and the, the head of the patient. So we further compared with Quadra with simulations as well. So we have here your the two together. So the green is the walkthrough pet, and this is then the Cross section through the Quadra system. Uh, and you see that we can actually get uh, excellent spatial resolution here below two millimeter. And that's because we have the depth of interaction because we don't have pixels with the monolithic block. Uh, and we have a very comparable sensitivity here. So this is the high intrinsic resolution of monolithics. And the depth of interaction enables you to put everything closer to the patient. Uh, and we put it at the distance of 50 centimeters, which seems uh, comfortable for most of the patients that we have. I would say 99% of the patients easily fit in. Now, important is also for a new system is, so what would be the benefit? Uh, and our benefit is really to um, reduce, I would say, the workload on the 
technologist to um, make it more comfortable for the patient. So therefore, we also measured the throughput in an existing Siemens Vision and compared it to what we expect in the system, so also based on measurements. So we see, basically, yeah, as you understand, putting a patient on a bed and sliding it in takes already like half a minute or even more. So in total, you lose already a minute, which we don't have here with this mock-up. And based on this, we can uh, predict the time for transfer setup, which is much lower actually in our uh, in our walkthrough PET system. Um, and it's interesting because in PET also the amount of tracer, of course, that you need at the beginning of the day will be based on the how quickly you scan your patients. So if you can, for instance, scan all your patients in three hours or you need eight hours, you will need Need less tracer at the beginning of the day. So this is a major saving actually in a walkthrough PET uh, design. So you could actually get 66% uh, reduction in uh, tracer cost per patient as well. So not scanning faster also means you need less tracer at the beginning of the day. And you can of course increase the throughput by just making it more efficient. We have uh, a while ago received our first modules, which you see here. So these are actually being built together with Comate Engineering, which is a uh, engineering design company in our uh, country. And we have actually these five by five centimeter detectors on each side, which you see here. And the final design will be uh, looking something like this. So you will have actually also head support, lean backwards and hold your hands on top or on the side is probably the next idea. Uh, with some video instructions as well to really automate everything as good as possible. So to reduce the number of uh, personnel that you need. So the benefits of our walk to pet, lower cost, BTO or LYSO, you need less surface, uh, very compact footprints, uh, and then also a spatial resolution, so monolithic detectors. Um, uniform of the whole field of view. And we have this thanks to the six layer DUI. Also, we have higher patient throughput and we think we can have less personal. There are also still some disadvantages and the major disadvantage I think to this to us is that we have uh, no anatomical CT quality. I've only talked about uh, PET till now. So, uh, and also how to scan patients who are in a bed. That's something we actually need to look for. So the challenges are related to anatomical information. Nuclear medicine physicians are nowadays used to CT. So they actually will use the CT kind of like a GPS. So they want to know where you look at certain activity by looking at the overlay with CT. Now, important is also to note that there's still quite some misalignment because you typically will scan the CT first and then you do this course, of course, quick with minimal motion. But then later on, you do the PET, which still takes uh, eight to 10 minutes. And also in between, the patient may move uh, and you cannot do PET scans in Bradfold like you typically will do in CT. So this could also be. So therefore, our future work is to also design a diagnostic CT in line with the walkthrough PET. Uh, and the idea would be that we actually have a similar setup as the AO system for those who know it, which is like an X-ray imaging system. So a small patient platform that adjusts for the height of the patient. So the system is completely stationary except for a patient platform. Um, here it looks quite like if the patient would move quite quick, but actually it's quite a very slow motion that we would have something like the speed of a turtle that you have. So here you have then the CT next to the bed. This is quite new work, but we've already started with the first uh, designs. Um, we actually will actually not only use the conventional emitters, but very likely also the nanotube emitters, which have the possibility to do also multi-source uh, uh, generation. And here you see an example of this from baggage inspection. So these are multi-focal spots here that you have multiple X-rays, so they don't move anymore. Uh, you have here your object, and then you have like one detector here and one detector here. And actually this enables you to image this full object. Um, so this inspired us because it's actually a um, very similar field of view. So, so this goes for quite large uh, baggages, um, about 40 to 60 centimeter, and also has works at similar energy. 
Did you see some examples of this system? So uh, with, uh, compared to a clinical CT scanner, which is, this is the Siemens Somatom. And this is actually the result that was obtained by this uh, system with adapted reconstructions. So this is an interesting design. So our idea would be now to get from a PET to the CT first like this, and then have two detectors, which actually go uh, down when you do this, which you can better see. So there it would close and then you would image the patient. So it's basically you change your, um, well, doing full stationary CT is very difficult, but actually this is quite a minimal motion CT. So the only thing that you would have to do is move your uh, source detector array or your square actually with this uh, downwards over the patient to scan him. So no more complex rotation, uh, and uh, quite easy mechanically to design. So a bit in, con in connection with the simple walkthrough bed. Then we have also done some more work on patient motion and transport. Um, basically, our idea is to actually make, find a very comfortable solution for the patient, um, which is easy to use, of course. And that's actually a support from the back, uh, but also a video instruction from the back of the patient. So he sees what he has to do and he can concentrate on the video while being scanned. Uh, of course, scan fast to minimize motion. So that's what we do in 30 seconds with the PET and hopefully also with the CT. Um, and then we have another camera which would track the motion of the patient while being scanned. So then enables you to move this platform towards from CT to PET and backwards. So this is also designed together with Homemade. Here you see some first uh, design pictures um, from about two months ago. So of course this doesn't look as nice as a final design, but uh, it shows you the different components. Basically you have the space for the PET detectors, which is this blue area. You have here the head hold, hand holders, which can be adapted and also the head support. And this way we can check now how we minimal the motion is. So our aim is to get it on average below one millimeter during 30 seconds. So where our first results seem to indicate that this uh, seems to be quite feasible. So this is the team that we have. So mostly based in Ghent, but also a connection with uh, University of Liège for the clinical part. So we have here a patient center design, which was also developed together with them. And then also some other application fields, which are more for the future is veterinary imaging. Uh, so Ghent has a veterinary department, quite big faculty, and also bioscience engineering, and then also with uh, Joel Carp as an external senior advisor. Here you see some potential valorization domains, and uh, we are already actually part of a uh, European network, PETAL, which is actually on plant PET imaging. And we would like to use this device for the first total body plant PET imaging, um, so which is totally new. So basically, this could be interesting for other labs doing research in this. Uh, here you see, for instance, how nicely you can make a tomato plant already with just a regular semen CT scanner. So actually, we could actually do much better and also add molecular imaging on top. We've done quite some work already on this on small animal imaging, but there we lack a bit, of course, field of view. And then also for uh, there's a potential for larger animals, which can now not be scanned quite often. But of course, the main thing is, of course, human pet CT imaging, where we can think about torso mode imaging, but even brain mode would be quite good. So we think it's a very promising concept. Uh, we also have a, a promising design where we're now doing the first simulations for also like a rectangular CT matching the walkthrough pet concept in a side-by-side -side design because we think it's easier than trying to integrate it completely into one a scanner, but more next to each other because the motion distance is actually relatively short. It's about... Uh, one meter only, you have to translate the patient. Uh, and then the patient motion will be reduced as much as possible and comfortable via platform design. If you want to know more, this is our website where you can see some progress uh, papers on this work. Thank you.